What's up guys? Today we're going to set up a dual monitor KVM with an M1 MacBook and a Windows desktop PC. If any of this moves too fast, check out our library of videos, especially the one on how to choose a dual monitor KVM. So to start, we need to understand how we chose this KVM model for this situation. All T smart dual monitor KVMs require three connections from each computer. HDMI cannot be split and extended, so the KVM is going to need one connection for each monitor and then a data connection for the USB devices. When choosing a KVM, we start by writing out the components in their ports. When doing this, keep in mind that the signal flows from the computers to the KVM and then to the monitors. Understanding this flow is very imperative if you require adapters for your setup. We're going to connect the M1 MacBook into PC1 of the KVM. The M1 supports only one external monitor, but we can get around this by using a docking station with DisplayLink. Most modern laptops typically do not need a dock because they have HDMI and Thunderbolt ports, but for this particular laptop, we need a dock because of the M1 limitation. The dock has one HDMI and two DisplayPort outputs. The desktop has a graphics card with one HDMI and three DisplayPort outputs. And since we always want to reduce the number of adapters, the correct KVM for today's setup is the HDK model. It requires an HDMI, DisplayPort, and USB connection from each computer, and it has two HDMI outputs, one for the left monitor and one for the right monitor. When connecting these monitors, we suggest to always use Display 1 to the left and Display 2 to the right. Display 1 gets its signal from the DisplayPort input, and Display 2 gets its signal from the HDMI input. This makes it really easy to trace back any issues if you come across one. The setup today is going to include a Wacom tablet, a Logitech webcam, and a set of stereo speakers. The KVM only has one standard USB port, so we're going to use an Amazon-powered USB hub to connect all of these to the KVM. All right, let's go ahead and set this up. All right, we're in the back of our desk here, and we're going to set up the desktop computer. And what you want to notice here is we have a graphics card. And if you have a graphics card, it's going to disable your motherboard's onboard graphics, which are these up here. So when you connect the KVM's video ports, you want it to be your graphics card only. So we're going to go here and plug in our display port, and now our HDMI, and then the USB port into the motherboard. And we're going to come over here to the KVM. And we're going to do HDMI, display port, and then USB. Now we're going to plug in our mouse and keyboard into the emulated mouse and keyboard ports. These ports have specific programming to allow the mouse and keyboard to be instantly available, but regular USB devices will not work in these. They will only work in the USB 2.0 port, which has this little squiggly line down here. All right, let's go to the front of our desk and let's turn on the KVM and set up our Windows desktop. And turn it on. And here you can see that number two is already selected and we have online two, which means the desktop is getting a data connection with the KVM. Now, the first time you set it up, you may see some flashing while all the handshakes are being resolved. Usually once this is done after the first time, you're going to switch back and forth much faster. Okay, now we have this up. If you aren't able to move the mouse between the monitors, then you will need to rearrange the monitors within your operating system. It's very easy to do. We'll show you how to do that. You're going to right-click on your Windows desktop and click Display Settings. Then here, you click Identify, and you can see the number on your monitors, and you can move them around in the order that they need to be. Also, on the same page, you can make a certain monitor your main display, which is where the operations and the applications are going to open up and where your taskbar and icons are going to appear. So we do that by clicking this box down here, which is make this my main display. Then we save that and we close that, and then you're all set up. If you have other issues like a jumpy mouse or repeating characters, make sure to check out our troubleshooting video that shows how to resolve most of these hiccups that other users encounter. As we mentioned earlier, Apple's M1 MacBook will support only one external monitor. So even though we have two Thunderbolt ports right here, only one of those is gonna work at a time for video. We get around this limitation by using a docking station with DisplayLink technology. The only downside to DisplayLink is that the drivers are not going to install automatically, so we're going to have to download those. But we'll go through that process with you today, don't worry. We typically recommend Dell Universal Docks with most installations, whether for PC or for Mac, and we have those linked on our tested and approved adapter page. Now let's go to the back of the table and let's connect everything really quick. To save time, we've already plugged in the Dell dock to power and we connected the USB connection to the MacBook Pro. We did have to pick up a different cable than what came with the dock, and we've linked that below in the description. So here we're going to plug in the DisplayPort. 
and then now the HDMI, and then finally the USB. Then we're going to run our cables over, and we're going to plug them into PC1, which is going to be, oops, grab the wrong one there, HDMI, DisplayPort, and the USB. Now let's go to the front of our desk and let's set up the operating system with our KVM. So the first thing we want to do is switch over to input one. And display link was already running, so it took a little bit of the magic away. I'm just going to quit it really quick so I can show you guys how we set this up. So normally when you first turn this on, it's going to look like this with the laptop working, but the external monitors are not working. And you need to download the display link drivers to do this. I launch Safari, I type in Apple M1 Display Link Drivers, and then you're going to come to this page right here by Synaptics. You'll download the application here, then just follow all the prompts, and then you're going to run the application. I already have it installed to save time. So we're going to click the Display Link Manager, and we're going to give it about five seconds here, let the application run, recognize the monitors, and then all of a sudden you're going to have the external monitors working no problem. One very, very important note, though, is that once you do have Display Link running, you want to come up here to the Display Link icon, and you're going to want to checkbox this Launch app automatically after logging in. If you don't do that, you're going to have to launch the Display Link Manager every time you want to use the Mac. Similar to the Windows desktop, if you can't move your mouse from left to right, then you want to come up here to the Apple icon and click System Preferences, Displays, then you click this Arrangement tab, and now you can move the windows around as you see fit. So they look like your monitors, and you can move the mouse as you normally would. One thing that we have noticed uh, that Mac OS has a lot less display options than what Windows has, so we just recommend sticking with what our Mac OS recommends. You can make some changes, but you're not going to find the same flexibility you would with a Windows PC. Oh, one final note, if the M1 setup, you can close the laptop, and you can use the M1 just fine as long as you have power. But if the M1 goes to sleep, you cannot wake it up with a mouse and keyboard that you normally would use. You have to open up the lid and use the onboard trackpad and the mouse. If anybody knows a workaround for this, please do us a favor and let us know in the comments. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks. The last set of components that we need to set up today is our shared USB devices. Since the KVM has only one USB port, we highly, highly recommend to use a powered USB hub. There just isn't enough voltage to power multiple components without supplementing the power. The USB 2.0 port is a direct pass-through from your devices to your computers, but because the KVM is a switch, only the computer that is selected on the KVM will be allowed to use those devices. When going from one PC to another, the devices will disconnect and then reconnect to the new one. This is a critical point if you're a Mac user because any external hard drives plugged into the KVM are going to need to be ejected before switching inputs. So let's go ahead to the back of our desk and let's go and finish this setup today. To save a little time, we've already ran power to the USB hub. It's very important that you power the hub first, and then you connect it to the KVM. Now we can grab our Wacom tablet, and then we can grab our webcam. And the speakers that we're going to use today, they actually are powered by USB, but the audio is transmitted over this analog plug. So we're going to power them here, and then we're going to plug in the audio to the headphone jack. Now let's go ahead and set up our operating systems with these devices. So here we got Mac open already. Let's go ahead and launch FaceTime. So FaceTime is launched here. Here's our webcam that's working just fine. Now we come over here to the options menu and then we can click sound. And here we're gonna wanna select Dell USB audio. It's Dell USB audio because we're going through this docking station it may look like the name of your monitor if you're not using a dock, and if you can't tell which one it should be, just try them all. It's going to be one of those. So let's go ahead here and test our speakers. Let's just play a video. Yep, our speakers are working. For you. No problem. All right, let's go ahead and switch over to our Windows PC. Now on Windows here, we're just going to open up Zoom. and going to go to our settings. Here's video. Yep, they're right here. We're good there. And let's do the audio by coming down here to the lower right-hand corner. And now we're going to select one of the options, which looks like our monitor. We move the cursor. Nothing is happening. So this is a situation where you're going to want to try more outputs. Let's try the other monitor. There we go. 
Now our audio is working here on our Windows PC. Again, if it's not clear for your situation, just try them all. Now, the last thing we want to test out is our tablet. So let's open up our application here. And let's see, yep, tablet is working no problem at all. All right, one last note that we want to make about shared devices is that the KVM does not have internal Bluetooth. So Bluetooth devices will not connect directly to the KVM. They're going to have to connect to a computer, which is going to bypass the KVM. This is fine, but the KVM will not be able to share those devices with your other computer. This applies to things like Bluetooth headsets, Apple's Magic Keyboard and Mouse, and Bluetooth speakers. All right, that's it for today. Leave us a comment if anything wasn't clear or open a support ticket on buytesmart.com for personalized recommendations. If you want to learn more, to the left is how to choose a dual monitor KVM, and to the right is how to set up a dual monitor KVM with two laptops. Thanks and have a good day.